Let's start off by looking at definitions. So beginning with adaptation, this is defined as a reversible functional and structural responses to stress. Um, and what happens is that the cell uh, reaches a new steady state. And in this steady state, this allows the cell to survive and to continue in its cellular functions. So in terms of adaptation, there are actually four main types of adaptation that uh, cells can undergo. And these include hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, and metaplasia. So let's take them one by one and define them. Hypertrophy is defined as increase in cell size, which then leads to increase in organ or tissue size. A good example will be skeletal muscle. For example, in um, athletes who exercise, um, there is increased metabolic demand on the muscle and therefore the cells actually increase in size. You can look up the mechanisms of this in your textbooks, such as Robbins. This is a microscopic example showing you what the actual cells look like in hypertrophy and this is the heart muscle. So the normal heart muscle, you can see that the cells are quite uh, elongated and have parallel borders and the nuclei are relatively small. However, in the hypertrophic heart muscle, the whole cell is larger, the nucleus itself is also a lot larger. Um, this occurs, for example, in hypertension, where the left ventricle has to pump against increased resistance. So there's increased work demand. And not surprisingly, this will also then translate to a larger left ventricle with a thicker wall, as you can see here grossly. Now, in hyperplasia, the cells actually proliferate. So the cell numbers actually increase, and this in turn leads to increased mass of the organ or tissue. A good example would be breast glandular tissue in response to uh, hormonal stimulation, for example, during puberty or during pregnancy. Now, by nature of this response, hyperplasia, you can tell that actually this occurs in tissues in which the cells are able to divide, um, for example, in liver or in epithelial type tissues. Hypertrophy and hyperplasia can occur together. Um, hypertrophy itself uh, in tissues that are not able to divide, for example, skeletal muscle, they cannot undergo hyperplasia, but they undergo hypertrophy. So these two can sometimes uh, occur concurrently. Now, um, the next uh, type of adaptation is atrophy. So in atrophy, uh, there is a decrease in cell size, but at the same time, also in cell numbers. And uh, logically, of course, this would result in a shrinkage of the organ or a smaller size. And an example, again, would be in skeletal muscle. Uh, for example, if the limb or the muscle is not used, uh, say due to immobilization from a fracture, um, the muscles will actually atrophy in time. Uh, metaplasia, this is defined as a change from one differentiated or mature cell type to another. And an example is when you have respiratory columnar type epithelium, say in the trachea, that undergoes squamous metaplasia to change to squamous type epithelium, and this is usually a result uh, as a result of irritation from cigarette smoke. Now moving on to cell injury, uh, this is defined as a sequence of events that occurs when the stress uh, exceeds the ability of the cells to adapt. So they can no longer reach a steady state and then they start to show uh, features of damage. Now let's move on to cell death. Uh, there are two main types of cell death. One is called apoptosis and the other is necrosis. Uh, we shall go through the differences a little bit later, but uh, do take note that they are different in terms of the morphology, so the cells actually look different, and also in terms of the mechanisms of cell death, and also the triggers. Uh, necrosis is always pathological, so it's always due to abnormal stimuli, whereas uh, apoptosis can either be physiologic or pathological. Apoptosis is also known as programmed cell death, 
The membranes of the cells are generally quite intact and the DNA and proteins are damaged. This is also known as a regulated suicide program. Um, and um, this apoptosis generally does not really incite a inflammatory response. Now, in contrast, in necrosis, what we see is severe cell membrane damage and breakdown, and there is denaturation of proteins as well as uh, enzymatic digestion of the cellular contents. Uh, so this is quite different from apoptosis, and um, it often does incite an inflammatory response. So um, in the next mind maps, we are going to move on to talk about the causes and mechanisms of cell injury and then also uh, about the morphology of cell injury and the different types of cell death.